Premier Hatfield asked me, he says, well, Noel, he says, what do you think about uh, this idea of a Charter of Rights and Freedom? And I said, Premier, in 19, uh, uh, 1967, the United Nations adopted the uh, international treaty called the International Covenants on Economic, Social and Cultural Rights and there were two instruments. The second one was the International Covenant on Civil and Political Rights. Canada, uh, the Prime Minister, was Prime Minister Pearson of the day, wrote to every Premier and said, <clears throat> it's now fairly well established that the federal government cannot enter an international treaty that impacts on part of the provincial jurisdiction without the provinces agreeing. So I'm writing to get your consent and agreement that Canada should deposit the instrument of ratification of these two new international treaties on human rights. And uh, by 1977, agreement was reached on the, uh, the decision that Canada should ratify these two treaties. And New Brunswick played a major role in having that happen in 1977. Uh, that um, the Human Rights Commissions were mainly representing the various provinces at national meetings. And we had formed our own organization of Human Rights Commissions. Because prior to that, um, when each year the labor uh, law administrators would meet once a year from all across Canada, the human rights uh, commissions that were under the labor minister, that included Ontario and New Brunswick and, and Nova Scotia and Alberta, but it did not include, include a number of other jurisdictions that had placed the Human Rights Act that they copied from New Brunswick under the attorney generals or another minister. So that's why we formed this Canadian Association of Statutory Human Rights Agencies. <clears throat> at any rate, the same, the same people uh, met at federal provincial meetings uh, on the United Nations instruments. And we, uh, we had organized the first uh, federal provincial ministerial meeting on human rights. And we raised the question of what the United Nations was doing and that we had this treaty and Canada should ratify it. And we were able to get the ministers to uh, go to their premiers. And most provinces studied very carefully the content of the two international uh, covenants on human rights. Make a long story short, we had in writing the written agreement and the province of Quebec did the most, in my opinion, serious analysis of these two international treaties. Uh, we did our study. Um, and so Canada ratified, and it came into force on the 17th, uh, mid-August of 1977. So I was able to say to Premier Hatfield, who had asked me the question, did I, would I recommend uh, that he <coughs> would uh, support the Charter of Rights and Freedoms in our Constitution? I said, Premier, absolutely yes, because we are already committed under international human rights law to meet these standards of human rights. And uh, he says, well, whether uh, we're going to have to follow these standards of human rights anyways. I said, yes, Premier. He said, well, fine, we'll support it. So <clears throat> you see the connection between a good public policy from a small province and um, uh, you know, the rest is part of constitutional history. I had the good fortune of having been in the room uh, when that final decision was made at a first minister's meeting. Uh, because uh, you might recall, there was the Gang of Eight, as they were called. And at a uh, meeting of the first ministers, I uh, was present. Uh, in fact, I have a picture, it was taken 30 seconds before it happened. The Prime Minister of Canada <clears throat> said we're deadlocked, deadlocked between the premiers who were supporting what's known as parliamentary supremacy. They didn't want the courts to make the final decisions as to what laws are valid or which laws violate these principles of human rights. And uh, <clears throat> the Prime Minister of Canada, Ontario and New Brunswick were for the Charter of Rights. 
any rate, uh, the, the critical meeting that took place in November '81 in the conference uh, in the conference uh, hall across from the Shadow Lorry in Ottawa. Prime Minister Trudeau comes into this meeting, puts his papers down, he says, okay, we're deadlocked, this is what I propose, we bring the Constitution back and give ourselves three more years to see whether we can reach an agreement on the Charter of Rights and Freedoms in the Constitution. And if we fail to get agreement among ourselves, we'll give it to the Canadian people by way of a referendum question. And he swings around and he stared at Premier René Levesque in the eye, he says, who's that Legon Democrat? You're the big Democrat. Levesque had just come off of uh, his referendum, and during that debate, he kept arguing, well, in our democracy, the people decide or through referendum on which way we should go. And I was astonished. Oh, my gosh, I think Trudeau has cornered him. And, uh, and uh, Levesque thought for a while, and he says, d'accord, I agree. And I always remember seeing Peter Lougheed's face drop. At the time, the tra he was doing this in French, when the translation went, went through, and I says, <clears throat> Levesque had abandoned the Gang of Eight, and because of that breakup, during the rest of the day, Roy Romanoff, who was the Attorney General of Saskatchewan, uh, Roy McMurtry, uh, Attorney General of Ontario, and Jean Chrétien, the Attorney General of Canada, went across the corridor and there was a little kitchen in that, in that, on that floor, the fifth floor of the conference center. And they said, we've got to salvage this, and then during the day, uh, that's when they came up with the Section 33 of the Charter, the Notwithstanding Clause, that allowed for a little bit of uh, supremacy of Parliament. And uh, but at the same time, they accepted a Charter that, at the end of the day, would be ruled on by the Supreme Court of Canada. So, so that's a really important part of the work of the New Brunswick Human Rights Commission in those very early days, and I'm talking the late 70s, early 80s. Uh, that had impact way beyond our uh, our province's uh, uh, jurisdiction.